Hey Rebel Crew, welcome back to another video and in today's video we are doing a fill in with a really cute fall design. So starting off I'm going to go ahead and start demolishing her old set. She had nothing but a new base with some crystals, something real simple and with a matte top coat. So I popped off her crystals and then I'm e-filing off her matte top coat that she has. So I did speed through this part because I ain't doing nothing special for real. Just e-filing off that matte top coat using my Melody Susie Extra Long Carbide Fit. This is one of my regular clients. She comes every two to three weeks, but the last time she was here, we did something simple because she was in a rush. I forgot what she had going on, but she had to be in and out. So I had gave her a quick fill in last time and popped some little crystals on the base and we kept it pushing. She usually does get a lot of like extraordinary stuff, like a whole bunch of designs and crystals and you know, all the fancy little jazzy stuff but last time we kept it cute kept it simple because my sister has stuff to do okay because period so if you know me you know i love halloween nails i love fall and autumn nails i just love holiday nails period so i was really excited to do this set so for today's set we're going to be using a little bit of glitter we're going to do a little bit of burberry like a burberry nail i'm going to do some rhinestones and what else um, oh, we're gonna do a sweater nail. I love a good sweater nail. Who doesn't love a sweater nail? Cause period. So yeah, we're gonna be getting like real festive, real cutesy, real creative, real autumn vibes, real hot chocolates, real pumpkin spice vibes. You feel me? Cause we love a good pumpkin spice. <laughs> I also love this time of the year because this is when I make my most money. Like September to December, that is my money making season. Like. I be running up a bag during the fall and the winter. I remember like two years ago, not Christmas Eve, but the day before Christmas Eve, I made $800 in one day. I said, yes, yes. Give me my coin. Give me my money. Yeah. But yeah, for any nail tech, for this time of the year, the fall and the winter, going into the holidays, this is your money making season. Get to it. Start grinding. Start posting. Start paying for ads on instagram if you have to start handing out business cards five six seven times a day if you have to this is the season where, where women love to get their nails done because of the simple fact that they want to be cutesy for, for the holidays the more clothes women wear the more cutesy they have to make up in every other department such as nails hair and makeup so that's when you're going to make your most money Next up, I'm going in with my mandrel bit using my Melody Susie e-file, obviously. And I'm using a fine sanding band, and I'm just edging up all of her new growth. She doesn't really have a lot. Her nails don't really grow as fast, but this is a two-week fill-in, so it is time for a fill-in. She does have a little bit of new growth, so we're just going to go ahead, edge up that new growth with a fine sanding band. Please make sure you are using a fine sanding band. Do not use a medium grit do not use a coarse grit if you use a medium grit or if you use a coarse grit you know what's going to happen you're going to mess up their natural nail plate it's going to be very damaging it's going to take off too much of the natural nail and she can get rings of fire so try not to use too much of a coarse bit on a natural nail i always use fine grit sanding bands that is the only sanding bands that i buy i don't buy any other sanding band but fine sanding bands also while i'm doing this part if she has any lifting on the acrylic i will try to remove as much lifting as i can if she does have a little if it's a lot i'll probably just take the whole entire nail off but if it's only a little bit of lifting i'll go in with the sanding band and take off that little bit of lifting around the cuticle area also while you're edging up that new growth you want to make sure you're using a very light hand you want to, you don't want to be too heavy-handed with your e-file while doing this because like i said before you can damage the natural nail plate and we don't want to damage the natural nail we want to actually promote healthy nail growth and making sure that her nails are sustaining also i feel like i shouldn't have to mention it but i'll mention it anyway for those of you who don't know Please make sure to use a new sanding band on every single client. A sanding band is a porous 
pro uh, not product, but a porous instrument. It has pores, which means it holds germs. It cannot be cleaned. You are to use a new sanding band on every client. Sandy bands are really cheap. They they are not expensive at all. So it should not be a problem to make sure that every client gets a new sanding band and and hand file. All right, you guys, let's hop into doing her filling. Like I always use in all my videos, I am using the Young Nails Monomer and the Young Nails Cover Pink. I love Young Nails Cover Pink Acrylic. I feel like it looks good on everybody. It's very universal. I feel like it matches a lot of other brands that have color cover colors. It just goes with everything in my opinion. So this is always my go-to when it comes to everybody. If they happen to ask for a different shade, I do have other cover colors by Young Nails and by Valentino but typically my go-to what I'm always reaching for Young Nails cover pink if you see a set that I've done nine times out of ten I've used Young Nails cover pink I also feel like Young Nails is very beginner friendly it's very self-leveling it's very um I just feel like it's a good quality product to start off with to help you grow into your nail career it's not going to run everywhere. It's not going to dry fast, but it's not going to dry slow either. It's a nice medium speed acrylic system, and I feel like it's very good if you are just now starting out. I also feel like it's good for people who've been doing nails for years. It's a good brand, and I stand on it because period. Young Nails is that girl. And even when I do use other like acrylic powders like say if I'm using Valentino or if I'm using nail house not polish any of those acrylic powders I always use it with young nails monomer I don't use any other monomer but young nails I feel like it just gets the job done it's very universal it goes with any acrylic pow I haven't had an acrylic powder that has not fit the match of young nails monomer it goes with any acrylic powder it's so universal I feel like it specifically goes really nice with Valentino as well. So when I am doing a fill-in, what I like to do is I like to use these that are on the drier side because that cuticle bead is always, even if it was a regular nail, like you're laying acrylic on a full nail and it's not a fill-in, the cuticle bead is always going to be a drier bead because you don't want the acrylic to run everywhere. If it's running everywhere, it's going to get all up in the cuticle area. It's going to be hard to get it out. Then when it's time for you to clean up the cuticle with the hand, with the e-file, you're going to be cutting and nipping her. So to avoid all of that, when you use the cuticle bead, you always want to make sure that that bead is on the drier side. Okay. So I am going to zoom in just so you guys can see a little better. As you can see, as I'm laying the acrylic, I am tucking in the acrylic into her cuticle area and then I'm just smoothing it right on down using the bristles of the brush make sure you are using a light hand when you feather down the acrylic to blend it in with the old acrylic that was already on there very light hand i'm only using the top of the bristles of the brush So y'all already know I do like to prime as I go as I stated in my previous video I always prime as I go and I'm going to give y'all another quick zoom in to show y'all exactly what I am talking about when I say I like to tuck that cuticle bead into the cuticle. We're going to place that cuticle bead right on in applying a little bit of pressure while you place it. We're going to mold it to the cuticle shape and I'm pushing it slightly taking the top of the bristles and tucking it right into the cuticle. I'm not jamming it. 
I'm not forcing it in there. I am slightly tucking. I call this method tucking in my napkin because we are tucking it ever so slightly into the cuticle. When you tuck a napkin in, are you shoving it all down your shirt and being all aggressive? No, you're tucking in your napkin very nice and politely, okay? Making sure that bead is a little bit on the drier side because if it's too watery, it's going to run everywhere. And if it's too dry, maybe you're not going to be able to tuck in nothing. Okay, so once we've done her fill-in and the acrylic is fully dry, we're going to go ahead and file her nails using our Zebra Print 8080 grit file. Before you start filing, you have to make sure the acrylic is dry because if the acrylic is not dry and you start filing, the acrylic is going to start rubbing off like Play-Doh. It's like a weird Play-Doh texture when you start filing acrylic nails that are not fully dry. So please... Make sure your acrylic is dry because if you start filing and it's rubbing off, you're wasting product, you're wasting your time, and you're going to drive yourself crazy. So I always get a lot of questions about when I file nails. People always tell me I have like the perfect shaping. And I just want to say, you know, I am the shape queen because period. But no, seriously, I always get like really a lot of compliments on my shaping. And... I feel like I need to do like a more in-depth tutorial on how I hold my hand file and like deeply explain to y'all because some people really struggle with shaping and shaping was something that came to me naturally. I don't know why, but I just, something about a good crisp shape does me right, helps me sleep at night. So if you guys want a video on shaping, let me know, comment down below. Now I am going in with my extra long Melody Susie medium grit carbide bit. Oh, I feel like that's a mouthful every time I say it. <laughs> and I'm going to smooth out her nails, making sure she doesn't have any lumps or, or divots or anything. We, we want a nice smooth surface because who wants lumpy nails? Granted my, granted, my application is really nice to the point where I don't have to e-file. But I feel like it's such a force to have it. I'm so used to doing it that I just, even if my application is smooth as butter, I still feel like I have to e-file. I just don't have to e-file as much and put as much strain on my wrist because my application is very nice and buttery. Also, I know I've said this in my last video, but I'm going to repeat myself because I don't want nobody jumping the gun. If you are a beginner nail tech, please do not order this bit. This extra long bit is made for advanced nail techs. I am an advanced nail tech. Now, if you are a beginner nail tech and you want to order this bit, I suggest not using this bit on your clients. You will cut them up.
practice on yourself first and then you can start using it on your clients this bit is a very tricky bit you have to know what you're doing because you could really slice and dice somebody up if you don't know what you're doing because i've cut my own self with this bit before it is a very dangerous bit so keep that in mind if you're a beginner i would not recommend this bit Okay, y'all, so I did zoom y'all in a little closer because I kind of want to explain to y'all how I file my nails after I lay my acrylic. So as you can see, I'm smoothing out the top with the medium grit bit. Now when I get up in that cuticle, you see how I'm holding it at an angle just ever so slightly and I'm using a very light hand to get up in that cuticle area? That is called sealing your cuticle. You have to seal your cuticle with your hand file with your e-file I meant to make sure you don't have any lifting so you want to get up in there you want to take your time be gentle and make sure your e-file is on your lowest setting when you get up in that cuticle area to seal the cuticle now don't get me wrong I've been doing nails for a few years now so I do use it kind of like like my lowest setting on my e-file is three but when I seal the cuticle sometimes I'll use it on like a five or six because I know what I'm doing I've been doing this for a while but if you're starting off crank that e-file down to the lowest setting as low as you can get and get up in that cuticle area okay you don't want to cut her you don't want to damage her nail so just be smooth I know this can be like a real technical part of doing nails using the e-file but I tell people all the time, your e-file is going to be your best friend. She is going to save you of years of having carpal tunnel because if you're hand filing everything, you're going to go crazy and your wrist is going to be killing you. So if you're scared of your e-file, it's perfectly fine. I used to be scared of my e-file too. Take your time, get to know your e-file, know your settings, know your speeds. Just know what you're doing, learn your e-file, that way you can do better at servicing your clients. Also, for a lot of people who do not know, because I didn't know this at first either, you have two switches on your e-file. You have reverse and you have forward. Reverse is for left-handed people. Forward is for right-handed people. If you're left-handed, your e-file should be on reverse. If you're right-handed, it should be on forward. When I was teaching, when I, when I was teaching at a nail school, I realized a lot of people didn't know that and I had to correct a lot of students. And that's okay because that's the point of nail school, period. But I had a lot of students struggling like, oh my gosh, I don't know why my e-file isn't working. I feel like the e-file isn't for me. Whole time, they just had their e-file on the wrong settings. So I tell people all the time, get to know your e-file and she will be your best friend.
and your brighter. Okay, next up, I am going to be buffing her nails just to smooth them out. But y'all, being an entrepreneur is just so crazy. Like, it's it's crazy. So in the past 24 hours, I've had three clients cancel. And I haven't had something like this happen in a long time. Like, I haven't had that happen to me since, like, the beginning of my nail career. Like, when I first started doing nails, people would just cancel left and right, left and right, left and right. So, experiencing this now, I'm just like, what? No. But you got to charge it to the game. It's all about being an entrepreneur, especially doing nails in general. Like, it's just, it is what it is. So the color that I'm using right now is called D&D &D 750. It's called Fudgesicle. Um, I love this color. I feel like a lot of people sleep on this color because they think it's like a grandmom color. But baby, this color eats down, okay? It's just, ooh, it, it gives fall. It gives, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna eat these girls up, okay? Love this color down. So I'm putting this on her ring finger and I like to do two coats of this color. I realize as you build this color up, it'll give a different effect. So you always want to do two coats. As you can see, I did two coats on that finger that just popped up on the screen, the ring finger, and yeah, it's gorgeous. Next, I'm taking D and D. I have no color. I have no color. I have no clue what color this is. I have to go look at oh, D and D 490. <laughs> Um, this is a really pretty brown. This time of the year, I really like to go to my local nail supply store and get a whole bunch of browns just to be stocked up. And I like to restock on the browns that I've had from last year because this is uh, the only color I use during the fall. It's just browns, burnt oranges, burnt yellows, you know, a little splash of red. So I like to make sure I'm stocked up on all those colors. So yeah, I'm taking D&D &D 490 and I am putting it on her middle finger and her index finger. And I think I only did one coat, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, y'all, I can't believe I've had three cancellations in the past 24 hours. Like, that is just so mind-blowing to me. Like, that really, I haven't had nothing like this happen since I first started doing nails. Like, people know not to play with my time. And granted, you know, the three cancellations that I did have, they had, like, good reasoning, which I totally respect. I think I'm just taken back because I haven't had something like this happen in so long. But, you know, if you're a beginner nail tech and if something like that happens to you, don't get discouraged. Okay, girl, keep on pushing. You're going to have days where stuff like that happens. It's literally all of, it's not even just about doing nails. It's just a part of being an entrepreneur, period, like. Stuff is going to happen to your small business and you got to know how to take the punches of the stuff that happens to your small business. So that way when you grow and be a big business, when stuff like this happens, you're just like, oh, okay, whatever. It doesn't hurt you as bad. It's all about growing and being a better entrepreneur. You just got to take it day by day. So next up, we are doing a Burberry nail. So I'm going to take my white gel liner and I'm going to do a nice, not too thick stri stripe right down the finger not right down the middle but like kind of off to the side and then I'm going to take another stripe and put it alongside the bottom using my white gel liner so I like to make sure it is a nice thick consistency that way I have enough space to do my black lines so I'm going to take my black gel liner and I'm going to do three lines one on each side of the white strip and then one right down the middle now a lot of people are always like oh my gosh Taylor you have such a steady hand <laughs> I know <laughs> no but for real it took me a long time to get a steady hand like having a steady hand isn't something that just happens overnight because I remember something like this this type of design probably like when I first started doing nails a design like this would take me like an hour to do and I remember I had a client sit for a whole hour while I did a burpee nail. And I'm just amazed at the fact that she sat there, sat there that whole time. Because I would have been like, girl, hurry up. Because <laughs> what the hell? 
but now a design like this literally takes me like two minutes so if you're starting off and designs take you a little bit longer it's okay boo we all been there okay take your time learn as you practice your speed will pick up the steadiness of your hand will get better it's gonna work out okay i know doing nails can be discouraging at times but i just want to give y'all some motivation keep going bookie you got this so on her ring finger i am doing a sweater nail classic sweater nail i remember when these first came out i was like oh this is so cute it eats down so this is something that i feel like that's just a part of nail tradition every holiday season now so yeah we're gonna cute do a cute little sweater nail as you can see i did matte top coat the nail and then i'm doing the design on top of the actual nail and i'm sorry if my voice sounds real raspy y'all i literally just woke up i ain't even brush my teeth or wash my face yet it's like seven o'clock in the morning i woke up and i was like okay let's let's just get straight to it i need to go and get myself together honestly <laughs> so to secure the sweater nail i take some clear acrylic powder and i dust it on top of the nail and then i have her put the nail inside of the uv lamp and i let it cure and once it's done curing i wipe off the excess clear acrylic that was on top of the nail for her pinky we are taking some gel top coat and doing a nice thick layer on the pinky and i want to take this brown glitter that i got from michael's and just sprinkle it right on top i do this to the pinky and the thumb as well and i tell people all the time don't sleep on michael's okay michael's has all the glitters they also have rhinestones for nails as well you can get a lot of stuff from michael's so if you need some glitter and if you need some rhinestones head over to your local michael's and run it up okay Mookie. so now i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna start doing her crystal placement this is my favorite part of any nail design like if you know me i love me a good crystal placement i love rhinestones i love bling i love shiny i love it all okay so this is a crystal placement that i've been doing for a few years now and in all honesty i know people are like like oh um, don't steal my rhinestone design. I came up with this design. Don't steal my nail idea. Listen, let me tell you something. Every rhinestone design that I've ever came up with, I stole it from another nail tech. I went on Instagram. I said, oh, I like that rhinestone design. I'm going to try that. And I did it. That is what social media is for. To to, I'm not going to say steal but to piggyback off of other people's artistic ideas like it's okay not everything is going to be original and if you came up with it you know shout out to you i ain't knocking it you know thank you for coming up with the ideas so other people could use it but there's nothing wrong with stealing artistic ideas from other people Okay, y'all, last but not least, we are going to go ahead and top coat her. Y'all know I am using my Koopa top coat. That's my girl. And yeah, that is the finished result. Please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what y'all think of this video. Run my views up. Like, smash that comment section. Let me know. And thank y'all for watching.